Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and welcome back. We are working on this really nice big uh, album. Um, these pocket pages are nine inches tall and 11 inches wide, and um, we are using the Voyage Beneath the Sea, um, which is a DCE, and I'm using two DCEs for this album because it's a lot of surface area to cover. Okay, let's get started. This is a fun page. Um, it's going to open uh, away from the center, and I'm actually going to have a belly band in this, which is not something I do very often, but you'll see why when we get to that. Okay, we're going to start um, with two flaps on the left and right, and this is five and three quarters by nine. Five and three quarters by nine, you're going to score a half inch, you're going to do that twice, one for the left and one for the right. <clears throat> And we're going to mount these uh, right flush with the edge of the pocket page. And I'll just, the pocket is this way. <coughs> Oops. <clears throat> Dog hair everywhere. <laughs> Tell you. German shepherds shred, shed like crazy. It's a full time job keeping the hair under control. Okay, so there's one. We're going to do the other. And you'll see they don't join in the middle, and that's on purpose. By design. So we've got this nice little gap here in the middle. And one of the um, patterns inside uh, the collection has a whole bunch of these, uh, like in a stripe. And so I'm going to be featuring this. Um, throughout the album. I just think it's really pretty and I thought I'd put it right here in this centerpiece right here. So for the moment I'm just going to set this aside but I just wanted you to see what my thought process was there. Okay now we're going to add two smaller flaps and these are um, four and three quarters so these are one inch smaller than the flap that we put down four and three quarter by nine, four and three quarter by nine. So even after you score a half inch on the four and three quarter side, you still have four and a quarter to work with in terms of placement of photos. So you could easily uh, put two four by four photos here and um, I think it would look very nice and you'd still have a quarter inch border around it. Okay, so these are gonna be centered on the flap that we just uh, installed. So I am, I got in here without my, my Tim Holtz ruler, so that uh, I'm going to have to, so four and a quarter would be two and one eighth is what I need to mark this at, two and one eighth is the center, and we're going to do that twice, two and one eighth. Of course, you're looking for the center line after you fold the score under. And then this is five and a quarter. So we need the center of five and a quarter. Just a moment, I wanna be sure. Okay, so the center for the larger flaps is two and five eighths from one edge. Or either edge so that'll be the center so now we're going to use we're going to line up this uh, center dot with this center dot and lay this flap down and these are both I went back and forth I didn't know if I wanted to do an accordion flip-flop um, but I decided to go this way because I and you'll see why in a minute um, I'm gonna add a pocket here okay so we're just gonna line up these two dots <clears throat> And I'm actually going to use my grid <clears throat> to help this go in straight. So I'm going to line this up. So I'm lining my dot up on a grid line. So I'm looking... Actually, that's not what I want to do. I want to... I want to line this edge up with what the, where the grid line is going to be so that when I come up across the top, I can see that it's lining up. So it needs to scoot over just a little bit, like an eighth of an inch. Let's see how I did. It's a little too much. Right there. 
Okay, so I'm going to line that up. Hold that in place. And then as I come across, I'm looking to, to join at that same marker right there. Okay, there we go. Okay, nice and even. We're going to do the same thing on this side. <clears throat> So the, there's another way to do this. As soon as I lay this in, I'll, I'll tell you. So the other way would be to, um, I didn't get that straight. To come in and, and do a half inch mark um, on the top and bottom, because that's basically this flap is an inch smaller, so we should have a half inch on the outside and a half inch on the inside. So there's two different ways to do that, if you're not comfortable with this way. Okay, so now, so far we have these two flaps. Lovely. So now we're gonna add this, this pocket. And this pocket is, I have, the, I have it marked down wrong. It is three by 10, three by 10. I should look, yeah. Three by 10, and it is gonna go on the larger flap. So you're gonna open this up and you're gonna put it right here on the larger of the two flaps. It looks like I still need some tape on the edge here. Okay, now we're going to get my contrast paper out. So you've got your double flap. You're going to open it. You're going to apply the pocket right here, and it's going to go flush with the edge um, of this pocket page, or I mean of this flap. <clears throat> there we go. It's been closed like that. Okay. Now we're going to do the other side. So again, you've got a double flap. It's going to go on right here. And I did the same thing. I did not put tape on this. I don't know how I missed it. <laughs> I got half of it. everybody's doing well it's been a while I got the base out for this and then I kind of got hung up on getting the pages designed they're so big um, that I was trying to you know really make them interesting but also one of the goals of this album is to make sure that there is adequate room for eight by ten photos so that was a little bit of a challenge because I've never I've not done one this large and um, what makes it challenging is that's a lot of real estate. Um, so it's hard to leave that much real estate for, I didn't come down far enough, for large photos, but then not have the page just be this big, giant, simple, plain page. So I've had to come up with some different ideas for um, sort of masking the fact that you've got all this large real estate. So one of the ways I'm doing that is, especially on this page, is um, closing it inside these double flaps. So when you when we look at the book, you're gonna see more than just a flat single space. So we've got room for four by four, fours here, 
and um, in here, and then inside here, we're gonna have two inserts. And these inserts are four and a half by eight and a half, four and a half by eight and a half. And they're gonna go right into this pocket. And again, you'll have more photo space, right? So they're gonna go right inside the pocket. <clears throat> just like so, and they fit nice and neat. So again, four and a half by eight and a half for the inserts, and this is gonna close. Okay, so now, here's this nice big space that I'm planning to put a billy band down the center, and that's how we're gonna pull in this strip. It's gonna be on top of the belly band, and then inside the belly band, we're going to have this eight by 10 photo mat. So you have an option here. You can go without the belly band and just have this be your eight by 10 uh, photo mounted right here and then you'd still have um, a half inch uh, frame around it. Um, or you can do this eight by 10 insert and this eight by 10 insert, you just have to trim a little bit down on your um, 8 by 10 photos so that you'd have just a nice little tiny border around it. And I would recommend an eighth off height and width and then you just get that nice 16th inch black border around it. So those are your options. I'm going to do the belly band. Um, one of the reasons I like that idea is if we do this and just put an 8 by 10 here, that's all you're going to get is one 8 by 10. If we do this insert, you can actually get two 8x10s. Three, if you put something here. But again, we'll have the belly band. So um, my recommendation would be to do your large photos on the front and back of this. And then here, you still have plenty of room for, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, four and a half by four and a half, or four and a half by six and a half uh, for photos on either side of the belly band. So that's my thought process uh, going into this. And um, I, I want to thank our viewer uh, who gave me some of the ideas for this album in terms of what she was trying to accommodate and uh, photo size. So, okay, so I've been going back and forth on what to do with this belly band and how wide to make it, and I haven't really decided. So I'm going to take a minute and actually decide how, I mean, one of the things I could do is make it just thin and just um, have... A black trim around the, the strip and I think that's actually what I'm gonna do. So that would mean that we need a 10 by whatever the width of this strip is and I think it's gonna be 10 by 1 inch. Let me look. Yeah so this strip is about 7 8 inch wide so it's not quite an inch and so if we make uh, the black strip um, uh, 1 by 10 we're gonna score a half inch on either side then it should be perfect. Okay. So let's do that. Let me pull in my scoreboard. Trim off my end first. Okay. Now, of course, you could make your belly band wider, but the wider you make it, um, the more you have to consider what kind of photos you might want to put on the background, if any. Uh, if you're not going to put any photos there, then, you know, make it three inches wide if you like. But if you're planning on putting photos here, I don't want to cover my photo up with a belly band. So, in general, as I'm designing albums, I'm always thinking, where am I going to put the photo? And, and when I close a flap, what's it going to close over? I don't like it when a tiny bit of a photo is sticking out. It's just my design aesthetic. I just don't like it. Um, it doesn't look on purpose. So... It's just something I'm always considering. Um, when things are closed, is a photo gonna be peeking out? Because I'd rather have it either completely displayed or hidden, not anything in between. Okay, so this is nine inches tall, so let's turn it right there. <clears throat> nine and a half. Okay, so again, um, this belly band, I've decided, is going to be one inch by 10 inch, and I have to write that down because I had that as a unknown, uh, one inch by 10 inch, and you are going to score a half inch on either end, so lay it into your scoreboard with the 10 inches across the top, score at half inch, rotate it, score half inch, or score at half inch, and uh, nine and a half, and then you'll have your nine inch belly band, which is going to go right here. <clears throat> Let's put a little bit of tape on it. 
And I'm not going to center it on the pocket page, and I'll tell you why. Oh, where did I put my tape toe tool? It's bright green, I should be able to see it, but I don't. Well, darn it. I'm just gonna tear it with my hand. Sometimes I can tear it straight, so most of the time I can't. Um, the reason I'm not gonna center it on the pocket page is I don't know how straight, as, as much as my intention is to get these straight and even, I don't really know if that's what happened. So I wanna center my belly, my belly band on the gap here, which may or may not be perfectly center to the, um, the pocket page. We can check it, but I don't know if it will be. If that makes sense. A little tab there. Okay. I'll lay that down and then I'm just gonna let it find come straight across and let it lay down flat okay and it should be fine there we go okay there's our belly band it's hard to see I know here's our belly band and then we're gonna put this beautiful strip right here and that worked out just perfect. Ta-da! What do you guys think about that? Pretty clever, huh? Okay, that's why this album took so long. <laughs> um, I, I, in this case, I'm really planning around the paper that I have. Um, in the DCE, there's a whole lot of what look like patterns in this collection, but not a whole lot of strong prints. So I want to make sure every single page pulls in one of these, what I would consider a strong print, as opposed to this, which to me is kind of, that's a pattern paper, but it doesn't really have like an image, for example. Okay, so now we've got all this in, we're ready to put some fasteners down to keep all this closed and in place. So this is gonna be a high magnet page. Um, not all my pages are, but this one is. Uh, okay, we need the fatter tape. I still haven't found my tape tear tool. That's weird. It's here. I know. <clears throat> you guys saw me using it just a moment ago. All right. So we are going to put magnets on both of these. <clears throat> I was going to say, I thought I got all the tape in here. Here it is. This is 5 8 inch, and I, I always use it on my magnets because it'll cover the whole edge of the magnet and soften it. Um, it's not required, uh, but especially um, I like to cover the edges of the magnets when they're like on the top because you can actually see the outline. Um, when they're on the inside, it's a little less important. You'll still see it, but it, your eyes won't be drawn to it like if it's on the cover. Okay, it's important that the magnet go on top of the pocket because once you start putting stuff in this pocket, the magnets get further and further away from each other. The attraction starts to um, be affected and it may or may not stay closed. Okay, so that's in place. We're going to do again on this side. I can hear my son piddling around. I think he's just about out of school today. So I might take a quick break after I get these magnets in and um, then come back in a few minutes. <clears throat> okay, so now that's closed. So the next thing we're going to do is put some magnets here. <clears throat> and I know it's a lot of magnets, but they're, it's going to be heavy, so we're going to need them.
actually, I think I'm going to try, I'm going to try to just use the three magnets on each side. We'll see. I'm going to put this magnet, it's attracted to the one on the front. I'm going to lay it down and then I'm going to pick it up and test it. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So once I tape it down, okay, now it's in place. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to, so what I'm trying to do is see if, as I'm flipping the pages open and close, if there's still enough attraction. So far it seems good, but we know we're going to have designer paper here and here. So I'm going to add two layers of paper to see if it'll still continue to have a strong attraction. Just a moment. Hey guys, sorry about that. My son was uh, taken off for the day. I just want to chat with him. Okay, so we were testing this. So it does stay closed. So now the important thing we want to test is how many layers can um, we put between this magnet and the magnet that's over there before they start to fall apart. So we'll have a designer layer here and a designer layer here. So we'll, that's one, two. And then if we put photos on each side, we'll have a total of four additional layers. So I'm gonna close it, I'm gonna turn it over, and I can see that it's starting to give up a little. So let me test that one more time. So it's, it's really up to you guys. I'm, I'm turning it over and it's staying closed. I'm having to shake it pretty good um, before these four layers fall out. And again, that, um, actually, it'll be more than that because we have an insert here. So I'm, I'm recommending that we add the additional magnet. I forgot about the insert. <clears throat> so do add your additional um, magnet here because there'll be an insert on top of this, which is going to have even more layers. Okay. So, so you have a set of magnets here, and then a set of magnets here, and we're doing the same thing on the opposite side. Okay. So we just need some tape to cover that, and then we're gonna add one more magnet. Hello, Nala came to see me. Hi, sweetie. Okay, we'll close it. Okay, so that should stay nice and tidy. So one of the things, um, because there's so many magnets on this page, one of the things I like to consider when flipping it over is trying to get away with no magnets on the opposite side. Um, just because uh, or cost is one of them, but the other reason is when the magnets attract to each other through the pocket page, if you have an insert, anything you're trying to get in and out of the pocket can be difficult if the magnets are attracted to each other. So the other thing is, if I do decide to put magnets on this side, it's important um, that they don't attract, that you want to put it down on the repel side. So that if you do have an insert, you're not fighting the magnet to get it in and out of the um, pocket. Okay, Just some things to think about as you're designing your own albums. That's it for now. I'll be back soon and we'll start decorating. Hey everybody, it's Stephanie and uh, we took a break and I'm back now with page one and we're going to start decorating. This is the fun stuff. Okay, I've got my papers um, and I just love this. So the interesting thing about the DCE is there's not a lot of strong patterns. So we're going to we're gonna see some of these bolder patterns repeated more often. There's a lot more of the, what I would consider sort of the patterns and solid looking where there's... Um, it's usually two or three color tones um, and then less of these. So I'll weave it in here and there, but we're gonna, you're going to see re more repeat patterns than you typically do in a new collection because it's a DCD. Okay, enough said. Okay, so this is going to be the cover. And uh, I love it. It's so pretty. I think I've already inked it. Um, so we'll go ahead and get these two pieces in. <clears throat> and I even like the yellow too, but but for this page, we're going to put this down and put the pattern up. <clears throat> I think I mentioned it before, but I am using two DCEs, and um, for the material list 
and the cut list as usual. If you click on the show more in the description, first thing you're gonna see is the list of materials that we carry in our shop that you can purchase to make this album. And then if you continue to scroll down, you will see the cut list for this project. And I can already see I'm definitely going to need my contrast sheet. There we go. Lovely, lovely. I'm gonna start with my contrast sheet in. <clears throat> I was just checking to make sure I had it right side up. Okay, again, we're on page one. Now these two strips come off um, the cut, one of the cut apart pages. So one of the pages has multiple stripes that you can um, cut. Uh, there's some words, there's different designs, but that's this is what I've chosen. And I'm gonna actually, so if you look closely, it's the same pattern, but I've trimmed off the two outside edges uh, so that it'll fit here perfectly, okay? That's gonna go right there. <clears throat> I'm going to put another one over here. There we go. Now to pull that pattern back in, it is going to be the trim piece on the pocket. So this is a pocket right here. And I'm going to put this here as a trim piece. <clears throat> Take my insert out. Okay. Just checking to make sure I inked it. I have. Shoot, I can't I can't remember if I hit record. I did, thank goodness. <clears throat> that happens sometimes. I sit down and I forget to hit the record. Okay, so that's in. Alright, so the next thing I had planned is um these strips to go here. It looks like I need to trim them a little bit. So I had rough measured them before I put this in, so I need to trim them down just a little bit more. Uh, and they're gonna go right here. And then these are gonna go on the external, or the B side of the flaps. And then we still, uh, I still need to pick a coordinating pattern to go, go here. So let's go ahead and get these trimmed down. I think these are ready. Yes. Oops. I'm looking at it. I had them both upside down. <clears throat> I 
miss these already. So let's go ahead and put these in. And then we'll come back and trim these two strips. <clears throat> Sorry about that. trim these down. I think they're the right, yeah, they're the right height. We just need to um, make them a little bit narrower. good actually um, the pattern is continuous this way so I'm gonna flip it and put this one on the side and of course I need to double check it again it looks like I need to trim it a little more I'm gonna put my contrast in here so I can see the edge a little better yeah a little more okay that ought to do it since we trimmed it, we now have to re-ink it. Oops, got a little heavy there. That's okay. Just making sure that the paper is going down all the way around the um, magnet.
Okay. There we go. Looking good. Looking good. That's so pretty. And then this piece, I'm oh, just removing the insert. It's going to go right here on this belly band. And it just so happens to fit perfectly. <laughs> so it is, uh, it's like 15th, 16th wide. And then this is one inch wide. So it's going to fit on here just right. <clears throat> And then, of course, there'll be an insert in here. Oh, isn't that exciting? This needs to move over a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to have to adjust this, I think. It needs to scoot over just a little bit. So I'm going to use a little bit of undo and, and move this, um, this hinge. It is not where I want it to be. I'll show you what I mean just a second uh, as soon as I get something because it'll take a second for that to soak in okay so as you can see it's not going straight that for some people that's okay um, and it, if you're one of those people good good for you um, I can't stand it so it'll drive me crazy so I'm going to unfasten this one side and just shift the whole belly band over a little bit easy peasy as long as you've got undo <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily recommend this without the undo. And since I used undo, when I go to place it back down, I'm going to put glue on it because the undo um, takes some time to dry. Okay. So I tore a little bit of paper, but that's okay because, there's the rest of my tape, um, it's okay because um, it's all going to get covered with a mat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue on that tab and I'm going to straighten it visually, okay? And I had done my best when I put the um, belly band in, but until you put everything together and close it all up, you don't really know what it's going to look like. <clears throat> and that, ladies, gentlemen, is that. So I'm just going to make sure that I haven't glued anything shut that I don't want. Double check it, and then I'm going to brush it. A little bit of extra excess glue there. Okay, I'm going to hold that in place for a moment because it is still a little damp from the undo. I'm rushing it because we're taping. Um, if we weren't taping, I would probably give this a half hour or so, let it completely dry um, before I did it in place. Okay, so now we've got a couple things to do. Um, we, we need to um, find a contrast to go in here, and then we still need to line the inside. So I'm going to take a break and line up those papers, get them inked, so you guys don't have to watch me go through that. When I get back, we'll continue working on the B side of page one. 
Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create. How's everybody doing? I'm going to jiggle the camera just a minute. I got to plug it in. I forgot. We are working on page one, and uh, last time we got uh, most of the A sides done, so there's just a few details to do. So we're going to go ahead and make that happen right now. So I trimmed out these two beautiful polka dots to be the liner for the pockets. And so the only thing I don't have planned yet is I'm going to cover my inserts and I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I want to do something different. So um, we'll get back together after I've got that figured out. But for now, let's do the pocket lining and then we're going to do um, the inside of this design. Um, the insert for the belly band and the background for the belly band. And then of course we have the flip side of the large, larger flap. So a couple things. And um, this happened to be a scrap uh, after I had trimmed off and covered um, something else. So I didn't have to spe specially cut these. These This was a scrap. Oops. There we go. It's hung up on something. And I'm, I'm going to have to take a break because Nala's not having it this morning. She needs some attention. So we'll go get that W-A-L-K in. <laughs> And then I'll get, I'll be left with some peace. Okay, there we go. I think I'm going to add a little extra glue on this so I have a little more time to slide it in. Before my glue dries on me. Mm. The other trick I do is I try to leave the leading edge, which is the edge I'm tucking in, without glue, and I didn't do that over there. And um, I think that is very helpful. It allows me to back it out and not leave a trail of glue, but also because there's no glue on the leading edge, it wants to glide in more smoothly. It's not trying to catch. And because it's tucked in, I think, a quarter of an inch, there's no risk of it actually pulling out. Okay, Nala says good morning. <laughs> Okay, so that is done. So now we're gonna do the um, the inside spread. So I love this, um, and I've used parts of it. And in fact, in fact, no, not on this one. On page eight, um, I used uh, this as as the cover for the pocket. So I am using it and featuring these strips throughout, but we have enough of it that I could actually use it in here too. I haven't inked this, I'll do that real quick. <clears throat> so I'm really like loving this in its whole. And I, let me show you something real quick. Let me trim this down real quick. These four, yeah, this is like three and three quarter by six. So you can still put photos here and it still looks nice. Um, and I had laid it out just to make sure because it is very busy and I wanted to make sure if you wanted to lay photos down, it, it wouldn't look bad. And I still think you can. So I'm happy with that. Sometimes I do that when I'm picking my papers just because I want to see what the photos are going to look like on the finished page. It's okay, sweetheart. Just a few more minutes. i got to glue down three pieces of paper and then we'll go. <clears throat> it's gorgeous day here in San Diego. The winds calm down, so that's nice for me and my allergies. Oh, I'm going to leave this on. We're going to tuck it in. Then we're going to peel it back and add the glue like we did last time. I, I said last time, but I actually, yeah, I think I actually recorded page eight before page one. Um, otherwise, I think you've got too much glue trying to stick it under the belly band. It's just a recipe for disaster. And you'll need to work quickly because if you need to, to wiggle this in place at all, um, you know, you're working against time with your glue. And I didn't have any trouble with the first time I did it, so I think it'll be fine. All 
All right, that's in place. Now, because this is in place, this side should be much easier because you're not worried about the whole thing slipping around. Okay. <laughs> My fingernails aren't, uh, aren't working today. Okay, there we go. There we go. Just a minute, babe. I haven't finished my coffee either. You can be so impatient, I tell you. <laughs> All right. I'm excited about this. I'm anxious to hear you guys' feedback on the size. Um, I would, this, if you decide to use alternate paper, um, baby, I need a minute, okay? I would get all 12 by 12s um, because you have a, eight, a nine inch height. Eight inch isn't gonna cover. Um, you're either gonna have to do substantial color blocking or go to your 12 by 12s. That's why the DCE was perfect for this because everything in a DCE is 12 by 12. So just something to think about. Um, another way would be to get a, a collection pack and two of the patterns and solids all in 12 by 12. So it wouldn't, uh, a bundle, you could make it work, but you'd have to do a lot more color blocking. And that's fine. I love color blocking, don't get me wrong. And because, depending on the collection you pick, if they've got a page where you've got these strip cut apart, that makes it easy to do color blocking and run a strip in between. So, <clears throat> something to consider. And then the other thing, the last thing to consider when you're doing color blocking is um, it, it will uh, affect your magnet placement. So I would wait and place my magnets after I figured out my color blocking. So the challenge with that, at least for me, is if I don't put the magnet in right away, I've been known to put a mat down right on top of where a magnet should go. So it might be a good idea to even put a pencil mark there that says, you know, you need a fastener to remind yourself before <laughs> before you put your mats down. And that's why I do my, my um, I try to do my magnets as I'm doing my base build before I start doing any decorating because I have, and I'm sure if you've been on the channel for a while, you've seen me panic and have to lift a panel up to get a magnet in or try to run it underneath. And it can be done and you can mask it, but it's ideal if you get it in the right way from the get-go. All right, everything looks good, a little ink. We're moving right along. Okay, so the last <clears throat> thing for this page, are they uh, two pocket insert? No, that's not true. I still have my eight by 10 insert. So the insert for the belly band and the inserts for the pockets still need to be done. And I'm gonna do that after I walk Missy here. And um, we that'll be another, you know, three or four minute video right after this. So there'll be a slight interruption. You won't notice it. The camera will jump a little bit, but That'll be what we do next, and that will be the end of page one. And it's really hard for me to put glue on this because I really like this side, but that's too much. Too, too much. Now you've got a lot of magnet buildup, so I would recommend opening it and getting behind, making sure it's fully burnished. Okay, so when we get back, we're going to do this insert, which is an 8x10, and then we've got two inserts here that need to be addressed. Okay, that's what we'll do when we get back after I get done W-A-L-K-ing. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Be back soon. We'll finish this page. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. <laughs>